Welcome to Harvest Valley Worship Center's Sermon of the Week. You can discover more about our church, pastors, and special guests at hvwc.com. We hope that you are blessed by today's message. Good morning. Can everyone hear me okay? Oh, I've been wrecked most of the morning. <laughs> Why don't we all just get wrecked together more? Okay. More. <laughs> This amazing love. I can't get away from it. It's been on my heart so heavy the last three or four months. The third chapter of Ephesians I've read probably 15 times, maybe. And it describes the love of, love of Jesus. And then I've read the 13th chapter of Corinthians many times, too. And it describes what love is. I believe that God's greatest desire for us is that we be baptized in his love. I believe in this day and this hour that he is bringing a baptism of love on the body of Christ like we've never seen before. The billion soul harvest that all the prophets have prophesied is going to take a people possessed by God's love. In our own strength, it's hard to love somebody that's unlovable. Have we all experienced that in our life? Yeah. When our love ends is when his love begins. It's a supernatural love. It's not natural. It only comes by knowing him and having a deep, intimate relationship with God. I'd like to read to you Ephesians 3, 17 through 20 in the Passion Translation. I'm going to go ahead and read 14 through 16 too. This is Paul speaking and he says, So I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus the Messiah, the perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on earth, and I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with the divine might and explosive power. Wow. Then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. This love is so amazing. Then you will discover, empowered to discover what every holy one experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions how deeply intimate and far reaching is his love how enduring and inclusive it is endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding this extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God wow it's unimaginable, this great magnitude of this love that he has lavished upon his children. If you look at what God is doing today on the earth, he doesn't do anything without beginning with love. Love is the centerpiece of who he is. It's the essence of who God is. The Bible says God is love. And that song that, that Anna Lee and uh, the worship team sang, as I behold you, Lord, I become like you. And God is love. So the more we behold him and the more we worship him and the more we invite him into our lives, the natural thing is for us to become love. To become love. That's who he is. 
When we encounter the supernatural love of God, can we remain the same? <laughs> no. I think everyone in here can testify to that. Because at some point, you encountered the supernatural love of God, and he drew your heart, and you gave your life to him. So we've all experienced that supernatural love of God to some degree. It's easy to have faith. It's easy to believe whatever God is saying when you're in love with him. Because you know his nature. We know who he is. We know that he's the best father we could ever ask for. So faith, it's, it's a gift. Faith is not something that we have to conjure up on our own. Faith is something that he has imparted to us. It's the faith of God. So it's so easy to believe. There should be no doubt left in our lives when we're in love with him. <clears throat> so the Lord gave me a picture of a river flowing. And this river was love. The river of love. And all the gifts and all the things that God has made available to us in heaven is flowing in that river of love. But it begins with the river of love. We can't do anything, go anywhere, do anything without that love. The Bible even says in 1 Corinthians, if I do all these amazing things and have all the gifts that I can move mountains and, and have, you know, the... I can't remember it. I'm going to read it in a minute. But anyway, but have not love. I am nothing. So I believe that's why the Lord is, is so uh, focusing. He's putting his focus on the body of Christ to be baptized with love. Is it easy to love the unlovable when you're baptized in love? Yes. Because you're loving them with his heart, not with yours. And when we love like this, it's like, trying to hide a bonfire in the dark. <laughs> Even the lost go, I don't know what that is, but I want that. I want that. Let's read on here. In Ephesians 5, verse 1 and 2, it says, Be imitators of God in everything you do. For then you will represent your father as his beloved sons and daughters and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ. For he surrendered his life as a sacrifice for us. His great love for us was pleasing to God, like an aroma of adoration, a sweet healing fragrance. Wow. Jesus showed us how to do it. When we walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ, we are a sweet adoration to the Lord and a healing fragrance to those around us. When we are possessed by his love, people get healed. It's just a natural thing that happens around us because of who we are and who we carry inside of us. I, I would just venture to say that most of the people in this room don't really realize who they are in God. Do you realize that you carry the, the maker of the universe inside of you? That his love, his supernatural love, rests on each one of us. That's enough to change the world. My wife and I were doing a, I've probably shared this before, but I'm going to share it again for those of you that haven't heard it. My wife and I were in Oregon, Bend, Oregon, working for the summer, and we were building this fence for this guy. This guy was, uh, he had dealt with a lot of uh, homeowners, and he was kind of a hardened guy. You could tell he, you know, he was used to dealing with people that had big opinions and stuff. <laughs> I don't know where you find those people, but. 
and his name was Joe. And one day we noticed that he had something on his face, and I said, Joe, what do you have on your face? And he said, I have shingles, and it was almost in his eye. It looked very painful. And I just felt the Lord say, why don't you pray for him? So, you know, we just asked him, and he looked at me like, and he says, yeah, I'd like for you to pray for me. This man was not used to this kind of stuff going on. You could tell it was like out there for him. So my wife and I prayed for him and laid our hands on him and prayed for him that the Lord would heal. And he just looked, you know, it didn't affect him too much. But about two weeks later, it took two weeks for him to process all of this. And he, he, we sat down at the table with him and he began to weep. <laughs> He was so touched. He said, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. I went, we just prayed for him. We don't realize what we're doing sometimes when we pray for people and when we obey Holy Spirit, just whatever he tells us to do. And he's, this man said, that was one of the defining moments of my entire life. He was so touched by the love of God. So when we're loving on people, be aware. You might be changing the course of their life. That supernatural love that each one of us have. We shouldn't ever look at loving on people the same again. Because loving on them is releasing the power of God in their lives to change them and to bring them into a fullness that they've never known in their life. This verse also mentions uh, and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ. What is extravagant? Exceeding what is reasonable. <laughs> absurd is what it says. To the world it might be absurd, but to us and to our God it is the way to live. Extravagant. It's the love that will go the extra mile. It's the love that will love someone when they are hateful. It's not too hard to find those kind of people. But those people need a touch from God. I feel like the Lord spoke to me one day and he said, the Muslim people around the world, it looks like they're taking over the world. But he said, those are my children. And they are devout and they believe everything that they believe. They're not wishy-washy. They believe it. Mm -hmm. Those are my children and I'm going to bring them to me. And there's going to be a revolution around the world of the Muslim people coming to me. And it's because of this love. It's because of Christians like you and me loving on people and showing them the error of their way and showing them that God loves them. Is there anything in, in our lives that we encounter that the enemy uses against us to stop the flow of love? Unfortunately, there is. I believe one of the greatest things that's been used in the body of Christ against us is offense. It's so easy to get offended. You all know that. I know that. But I believe God's heart is for us to be able to just brush it off like it never even happened. We were listening to Bill Johnson one night and Bill was talking on this subject and he says, here's what I do. He says, I give up my right to be offended. And when you say that and mean it with your heart, God empowers you to do that very thing, to give up your right to be offended. And love just flows. There's no interruption because you didn't stop and, and be offended, but you just went on. So you might have to say that ten times a day. I give up my right to be offended. But God will empower you to not be offended anymore.
It's easy to take up someone else's offense, too. <laughs> yeah, real easy. It's that same trap. I give up my right to take up that person's offense. Because in the kingdom, we've surrendered our rights to the king. Our rights are surrendered. And somehow, sometimes we think, well, you know, I'm really hurt. That hurt my feelings so bad. God knows it hurt you. And his healing love is there to get you over that. And for you not to stay in that place of offense. But sometimes we think we have the right to stay in offense. No, we don't. If anything will damage your life, it's that. If you want to invite the enemy into your life, just stay in a fence and see what happens. Yeah. I've got another scripture, Colossians 3.14. For love is supreme and must flow through each of these virtues. Let love become the mark of true maturity. Those that have known the Lord for any amount of time should know this. We should live this way. Unoffendable. What's that? Uh, Colossians 3.14. In another um, translation, the New King James, it says, But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. There's nothing wrong. You can't find anything wrong with love. Amen. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> I won't take the time to... 13, 1 Corinthians 13. I won't take the time to read the first three, but it's talking about if I have the gift of prophecy with the profound understanding of God's hidden secrets, if I possess unending supernatural knowledge, and if I had the greatest gift of faith that would move mountains but have never learned to love, then I am nothing. In verse 4 it says, Love is large and incredibly patient. Love is large. It's as large as the universe because God is love. Love is the most powerful force in the universe. If you're having trouble in your life, you should question, is love the centerpiece of my life? Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. Gentle. Love will sit and listen to someone's story, even though it might be boring or whatever. Love will listen. I believe there are so many people in the world that just need somebody to listen to them. They are hurting. There are people that, know, that nobody pays attention to that, that people have ignored. They feel like they're down and out. And all they need is a gentle person to listen to them and to love them. It refuses to be jealous when blessings come to someone else. Wow. <laughs> Love does not brag about one's achievements nor inflate its own importance. It's humble. Love is humble. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not is easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. <laughs> Can we find something wrong in the world today? Yeah. Everywhere we look. Everywhere we look. And it's easy to say some negative things about people that we don't like. I've been guilty of it. That's not love. Yeah. 
Love is a safe place of shelter, for it never stops leaving the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. Love stays. Love doesn't go with the tide. Love doesn't, isn't wishy-washy. It's here one day and gone the next. The love of God stays. At the end of that chapter, it says, There are three things that remain, faith, hope, and love. Yet love surpasses them all. So above all else, let love be the beautiful prize for which you run. <laughs> love is why Jesus came and gave his life for us. John 3.16, everybody knows John 3.16. For God so loved that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the very fundamental foundation of Christianity is love and it gets overlooked so many times in our lives it is it is it is the beginning and the end <laughs> in 1 Peter 4 8 it says love covers a multitude of sins why because love does not rejoice in what is wrong. Love believes the best about people. Love forgives. Love is gentle and kind to all. Love takes no offense. <laughs> that covers a multitude of sins. I really feel like the Lord wants today for us to have people come up and if you want a baptism in love, if you want to surrender your life even more to that baptism of love, I know many of you walk in this kind of love in your lives. I've seen it in action in many of you. But there's always room to be baptized more in God's love. I'd like to read one scripture before we do that. And it's in Romans 8, 38 through 39. By the way, I'm reading the Passion Translation. So now I live with confidence that there is nothing in the universe but the from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death, life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. There is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us, distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus one I believe this applies to the body of Christ also yeah. so many people are just ready to jump jump up and go to another church instead of staying and working it out and not being separate separating ourselves from our family from the body of Christ that God has put us in I believe that God's love can overcome any obstacle in this church. If, you know, if there's something wrong, God's love can overcome it. Amen. Talk about it with his heart. Holy Spirit, would you just come right now? Would you intensify the love in this room? Would you come, Lord, and touch your children, Lord, those that are hungry, God, to 
to be vessels of love, and to be vessels of honor for your name and for your glory. Yeah. I'm going to invite all you, anyone that wants prayer for this, to just come on up, and Kevin's going to come up, and uh, we'll just pray for you if you want. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Harvest Valley Worship Center is called to be a refuge for healing and a launch pad for transformation. If this message impacted you today, please let us know in a comment, or you can email us at media at hvwc.com. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to connecting with you.